Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our series or mini series, mini tutorial, just small tips about subsurface scattering. I know you've been uh, wondering how do we get all of this a very nice uh, subsurface into our um, into our final element. So here we're in Maya. I did a quick setup here with the, with the dwarf and there's a couple of things I want to check. For instance, as you can see here, the normal map is actually inverted. Uh, the textures are looking nice. I think they were a little bit too saturated on substance for some reason, uh, but he looks okay. And we have this HDR on the on the back. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my hypershade. And I've done this connection a lot of times. So if you've never seen me doing this and you're wondering how to connect materials, you might wanna go back and check a couple of the other videos that we've been uh, uploading to the, um, what's the word, to the to the channel, because uh, we go over this thing in, in several locations and I don't wanna waste all of your time. You already know why you're here, right? So um, <laughs> let's go to the normal map here, to the bump 2D. And there's an option here in the Arnold option. And I'm gonna turn off Flip Art and Flip it G so that when we render, the normal map is actually going in the direction that it should be going. So yeah, I mean, it looks good. Uh, but now, as I've mentioned, give me just one second. I'm listening to some music, but it's way too loud. There we go. So as we've mentioned before, um, we need a very strong light setup for this to work. But before we do that, let's take a look at the dwarf here. You guys notice anything um, interesting? I know he's a dwarf, but He's very small and being very small, it's going to affect how the subsurface works. So this guy is only two centimeters tall and uh, that's a problem. So how tall should the dwarf be? I believe and the dungeon uh, guy that I have around there, um, it says that they are about four foot, four feet, four feet and four feet uh, translated to uh, the world's uh, measurements, <laughs> that would be um, 120 centimeters. So I'm going to say that this is 120 centimeters on the, and let's say 50 and 50. So that's roughly how much a dwarf should uh, be in regards to height. So I'm going to grab this guy, scale it up and make sure he roughly fits there. I think that's a, uh, that's about right uh, compared to the torso legs and everything that he still needs to fill. Uh, I would say that that's a, that's a good measurement. So uh, it, it shouldn't matter, I mean, it, it's not that it shouldn't matter, like it shouldn't make that much of a difference on this first render that we have. Like if I just do this, it's, it's pretty much the same. And the reason is the texture maps and everything just adapt to the size of the object and that's it, so no, no big deal. Uh, but it will change on the subsurface. So let's go to subsurface now. In order to set up our subsurface map, we need to go to the hypershade. And on the options of our material, which by the way, we should probably rename to something a little bit nicer. I need to find a way to place my microphone so that uh, so I can see the keyboard. Otherwise, it's very, very uncomfortable. It's been a lot of trial and error this last couple of days. I'm not going to lie with this new uh, setup, uh, which, by the way, the camera thing is coming. So uh, we should have our face to face interaction uh, very, very soon. So now here in the in the material, we're going to go down here and we're going to go to subsurface. And immediately you're going to see if I were to just like push the subsurface all the way up to like a one and render horrible. It is horrible. It looks chalky. It looks very bad. We lose the texture. So what the hell is happening here? Well, the thing is, subsurface actually has several parameters that we need to take care of. The first one is the weight, which is where the subsurface scattering is going to be affecting, which in this case, we want everything. We want full subsurface effect, right? So we're going to keep the weight at one. Now, unfortunately, we're not unfortunately good for us. We have this thing called subsurface color, but that means that the color up here, we're not going to be using anymore. And we're going to have to convert this vase color and we're gonna plug it on the subsurface color instead. So now we have weight zero. We can even break the connection here because we're not gonna be using color anymore. We're gonna be using the subsurface color. So if I were to just go over here again and just hit play, you're gonna see that now we are back to our color, but now it's very, very grainy. So I definitely need to increase my samples because otherwise we're not gonna be able to see exactly what we want. So let me go here. Arno renderer. We're gonna go to adaptive sampling and enable this things so that we get uh, this element right here. And uh, we are gonna we're gonna be uh, modifying how much intensity we want. So as you can see, it's, it looks better. It's still gonna process and it's gonna take a long while until it finishes. Uh, but at least we can see a, a better result. Now, uh, as I've mentioned before, this of surface uh, effect is one that you definitely need to have a strong light to properly appreciate. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna go here to the exposure. I'm gonna say minus two, so we have like a dark scene. Imagine this is like a like night is falling and, and there's nothing. Uh, like th th there's like a very, very small light and I'm going to go into uh, Arnold. Give me just one second. 
Sorry about that, I had to take a very important call. So, uh, yeah, I was mentioning, we're gonna go into our node and we're gonna use an area light. Uh, actually, we, we should definitely use a shot cam now. So I'm gonna go rendering, camera, panels, those were selected. And uh, we're gonna create a new focus here for our character. So let's do like a, like a sort of heroic pose right here. So we have a very cool thumbnail for the YouTube video. So probably you guys saw this thumbnail and were like, oh, that looks very cool. I wanna learn how to do that. Well, you are gonna learn now. So yeah, we're gonna do that. And we're gonna say panels, uh, tier off copy, or uh, we don't even need to tier off copy because we can just go here to camera shape one. And now we're gonna get the render from this uh, camera view. So there we go. Uh, now, if we wanna add that sort of like surface scattering effect to the back of the head, which is uh, usually what we see or, or, or the thin areas, this is where we would grab the, the Arnold light. Here we go. And we would move this guy up here, make it slightly bigger. Remember, the, the bigger the the light, the sharper, or the softer the shadow, sorry, the, sh the smaller the light, the, the smaller the shadow. So I'm imagining this might be like a fireplace or something on the back here, like some magic magic effect or something from fantasy land, you know? And uh, we definitely need to increase the exposure. So let's go to like a 10 exposure, uh, probably more because the, the distance is really bad. There we go. So now, as you can see, this is a very, very sharp light, very intense light that's uh, giving us. And you can see, you can already see this subsurface scattering effect going on right here. The only thing that's gonna be uh, not working exactly as we would expect is gonna be the color. Because right now, the color that we're using for the subsurface is this uh, basic white color. So let's open this thing up. As you can see, we're getting uh, <laughs> a lot of windows now. Let's, let's make this small here. There we go. So we can see everything or at mo as many things as possible. So yeah, I'm gonna go to the to the material right here. And if we go to the subsurface, so you're gonna see that the radius is actually uh, the color that we're gonna be uh, using. So if we were to change this radius, uh, no, sorry, sorry. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we change the radius to like a red here and we do this thing, you're gonna see that now the color that we're gonna see, we're gonna see through the object is gonna be this element right here. Okay, so, okay, it's looking good. Of course, this is way too much. So it could either be the intensity of the light is a little bit too much. So let's bring the light back or on the object here, the scale is a little bit too too intense. So if we have a smaller scale, you're gonna see that we're gonna have less uh, of an effect. So we go to like a 0.1, it's gonna be pretty much no effect. And if we go to like a 0.3, we're still gonna start getting a little bit of an effect. Let's go to, I think 0.5 was, was not bad. Now, one of the problems that I'm seeing here is even though the character looks very good, we're getting subsurface everywhere. Every single part of our character is getting subsurface. And that's something that we saw in, in, in Substance Painter that we usually don't want. You usually are gonna have a little bit of subsurface everywhere. Uh, there's gonna be areas where things are gonna be a little bit more intense. Now, if you like this result, if just by plugging in the, the subsurface color and turning on subsurface, you like how it looks, then go for it. If the object looks okay, go for it. I personally think that's a little bit too much, a little bit too red uh, everywhere. So uh, we're gonna be changing that. And the way we're gonna be changing it, it might be a little bit counterintuitive, uh, but we're actually gonna be turning back on the color. You might be wondering, why, why are we gonna turn back the color on if we, we just plugged everything here, right? The color, is, the color is here in the subsurface color, so why do we need to plug in the color again? And the reason is we're gonna be modifying the weight. Remember what we said about the weight? If we had zero weight, then there's no subsurface, and if we have a value of one on the weight, we're gonna have full subsurface. So I'm gonna bring a file texture, and the texture that we're gonna be bringing now it's gonna be, of course, the mask, the mask that we painted. So this SSS mask that we have, this is the, the element that we're gonna have. And on the output color, we can use the output color R, that's fine. So output color R is gonna be my uh, subsurface. So the weight of the subsurface, as you can see here. So now if I were to render, it's gonna be, it's gonna look very, very funky. But what's gonna happen is we're gonna have subsurface only on the areas that we painted on, in, in Substance Painter that we want to have subsurface. So as you can see, we only have subsurface on the ears, a little bit on the eyes, a little bit on the, uh, on the nose, on the mouth, and on the chin, but everything else black, completely black. Why is it black? Well, of course, because we have no color. And right now this mask is pretty much telling us that wherever we don't have subsurface, we're just gonna have a black color. So I'm gonna go back to my base color, turn the color again, and plug my color, the result here of my color, this guy right here, the uh, base color, into my base color. So now, what I am gonna see, 
Let's give it a go here. Oh, wait. I think I missed that one. Uh, base color, out color. I think we need the multiply. There we go. So this output right here, that's the base color on the dwarf channel. So we hit play and it's not working. Why is it not working? Did I forget to turn on something? I think I might have forgotten to... No, the weight is there. There we go. Oh, that's really weird. I mean, the weight is there. So let's do a quick test here to make sure that this is working. Give me just one second. Let's, let's unplug the... Or let's turn off the subsurface for just one second. So I'm gonna go here and on the subsurface code, let's break the connection and let's render. Yeah, okay, so so that's working. And now we're just gonna mask out where we want subsurface and where we don't want subsurface. There we go. It was probably just a bug or something. It forgot that uh, <laughs> things were uh, playing around. So that's it. That's pretty much it, guys. Like with this a new setup, as you can see now, uh, we're able to get the elements into position, right? Like we, we have our basic color, the same way we've, in, we've, we've, in which we've textured every single thing in our channel. Uh, but now we're adding a new layer with a mask that tells us where the subsurface scattering is gonna be more intense. Now, some of you might be saying, well, what if I wanted just a little bit of a subsurface like everywhere, right? Like maybe I want a little bit more subsurface here or here. Like, is there a way to, to control this in a, in a better way? And the answer is yes, we're gonna have to use nodes, but we can't do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a ramp node, a ramp texture right here. And the ramp texture, what I'm gonna be plugging in is this color right here. Or actually, no, I'm not, it's, not, it's not the ramp texture. Give me just one second. It's a levels. We need a levels. Uh, but it's not called levels in Maya. It's called. Someone asked on the comments, hey, can you do a. Um, what's the word? Can you do and explain all of the notes here? To be honest, I don't know all of the notes. Like, I've used some of the notes for some of the things that I know how to do. Uh, but Maya, in every single 3D package, you know, you, you usually learn certain things. Uh, especially for the for the kind of things that you're uh, good at or the things that you're gonna be uh, working with. And then I think this is, is the luminance. No, it's not the luminance. The luminance is just gonna give us another value. Where is it? It's the remap. It's the, there we go, remap value. This is the remap value. So we're gonna input the uh, value here. And then the remap node, what we're gonna be able to do we using this value is we're going to be able to change the values. So we, we just input the value in this case is the, the RGB uh, or the, the red channel. And if we push the, the blacks up, they're going to become grays or whites even. And so if we want to adjust a little bit of, you know, subsurface to everything, we can just like push this a little bit up and then this out value, is going to be my new subsurface mask. So now what I'm expecting to see here, is a little bit more subsurface pretty much everywhere. You can see it here, how we're, we're starting to get some, eh, just a little bit of an extra touch like here on the, on the, on the um, deltoid. And that's gonna, of course, help us with the, with the overall scene. So this is what I meant uh, in, the, in yesterday's video, in yesterday's video when I was talking about subsurface is one of those things that's, that's shader dependent, it's material dependent. So it doesn't really matter if you're doing it in substance, you're still gonna have to tweak it and move it and, and properly like set it up inside of uh, Unreal, inside of Unity, inside of Marvel State, inside of any single software that you use, you're still gonna have to do a couple of tweaks here and there. So that's why it's important to know uh, how to uh, properly use the notes and stuff. So I do think I do think the, the contrast is a little bit too much. For instance, the whites for me now seem a little bit too high. And again, one of the cool things about this one right here, this uh, remap value, is we can actually bring the whites down, okay? So if we bring the whites down, we're gonna be reducing the amount of uh, subsurface that we he see here on the on the element. People like to exaggerate subsurface because it's one of those effects that looks really, really, really cool. So I'm, I'm one of those guys, I'm like, I know that this is not realistic, but who cares? It looks very cool, right? So uh, feel free to just play around and find something that looks uh, good for you. Now, one thing I can do here, for instance, is let's make this uh, shot a little bit more cinematic. Let's give it a little bit more, uh, again, more like oomph. Uh, and let's say that this guy is, mm, what would be a good story? Uh, he was on a fireplace, okay? So he was on a camp and the, and the fire from the camp, let's play here. The fire from the camp is uh, 
like just illuminating him and he saw a very like uh, magical and uh, mysterious light at the at the uh, like far away from where he was so he just stood up and he's like going in to see what, what the hell is going on there right so let's go here to the arnold options uh ba -ba -ba -ba, where is it arnold here you are i'm just gonna do a new element and i'm gonna change the shape from a uh, square to a cylinder not cylinder a disc so it's like a like explosion or something and i'm gonna make it really really small so it's a very intense explosion and let's say again like a probably like a 15 I don't want this to be like overwhelming and I definitely want like a like a crazy color like a blue color and one thing we can do is move the spread down so it's like a like a beam of light we're gonna have to of course bring the exposure down so I'm not, not in love with it but it's it's doing something. It's overwhelming my colors though, so. Something like this looks a little bit cooler, I think. Maybe a little more spread. Yeah, I think something like this is is okay-ish. Uh, let's say instead of a uh, like an explosion or something, he is looking at a, like a floating spirit or floating something, uh, floating uh, uh, wisp or, or something. So we're just gonna create a sphere here, bring the sphere to the front so that he it's it's close to him. I might even place it on the on the frame to be honest. So just like a. You guys know Navi, right? From from uh, Zelda, from uh, Ocarina of Time. So maybe this is this like a little little wisp. Now you can see that it's actually projecting a shadow because the spread on the on the light over here is way too too big, or way too small. So I'm gonna make it bigger so that the shadow is not as intense. And of course, we need to bring the exposure up. And this guy, this little sphere right here. I'm gonna convert, uh, I'm gonna say uh, Arnold lights and I'm gonna make it a mesh light. I'm gonna make it visible and the color of the light's gonna be this like electric blue. Let's pause this so it's easier to work with. Lights right here. Let's do this electric blue and let's turn it on. Hey, there we go. And the exposure of course is gonna go like way up. Because I want the little sphere. Well, probably ten is a little bit too much. You can see it's uh, it is uh, shining on my character, but it's making a like a very uh, weird effect. I don't think we need the light on this side other than because we're gonna have this like a glow light over here. Now you can see the samples uh, not perfect, and the reason why the samples are not perfect is because we have very low samples here. So let's up the samples here so that we have more samples for the for the light. And uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I'm gonna decide whether or not I keep this like glowing sphere. I really like this effect over here. Maybe I just do like a cinematic, uh, just like a like a key shot, key light over here. Uh, we'll see. You'll see on the thumbnail the final result. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. So remember, come back tomorrow. We're gonna be talking about. Uh, this is gonna be more like an explanation video. We're not gonna be seeing any tricks, but it's information that I think is gonna be useful for you guys about. Uh, models and and what the importance what, what kind of things do you need to look for when, whenever you're selling models or whenever you have a client that's asking models from you and on sunday special surprise so make sure to come back that's it guys bye bye